My dearly beloved in Christ, for our sermon this morning, I would like to continue the same theme of last as of last Sunday, which was on the vestments that the priest wears. So this morning I would like to speak about the liturgy in general, the liturgical year, and also about the colors of the vestments. So there are five basic colors that are used for the vestments. White, red, green, violet, and black. There also are two additional colors that are sometimes used. Now white is used for all feasts of our Lord, our Blessed Mother, and saints who were not martyrs. It is also used during the Easter and Christmas seasons. White is a symbol of joy, of innocence, of purity, and of virtue. We also have red, which symbolizes blood, and also the fire of the Holy Ghost, which is used for the saints who were martyrs, and also feasts of the Holy Cross and Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday or any Masses in honor of the Holy Ghost. The color of green is what we might call the background color of nature. In springtime, we see the trees bud forth their leaves, the plants grow, and green is the predominant color of nature. And we delight to see the rebirth, so to speak, of nature in the springtime, and so green symbolizes spiritual growth. It also is the color of hope. And we use green on all of the Sundays and ferias after Pentecost time and also after Epiphany. Again, it is like the background color in the liturgy. Violet is the color of penance and sorrow for sin and mortification. So we use violet to symbolize penance and sorrow during the seasons of Advent and Lent. And as you notice, on the three Sundays preceding Lent that serve as the transition, we also have violet vestments. And then there is black. Black is used for all Requiem Masses and also on Good Friday. Black, the color of death and of mourning. Now, we also have two other colors that may be used. One is rose. And rose vestments are permitted twice a year on the third Sunday of Advent, called Gaudete Sunday, and the fourth Sunday of Lent, Laetare Sunday. And that rose color is to symbolize joy in the midst of the season of sorrow. That even as we do penance, and as we are sorrowful, we still maintain that joy of our Catholic faith. And also, there is the color of gold. And vestments of gold thread are permitted uh, any time in place of white, red, or even green. But usually we use gold just at Christmas or Easter time or on very special feasts. I remember many years ago when I was a young seminarian, a priest showing me a vestment. And he was a, tra he was a missionary priest, I believe as a military chaplain. So he had his mask kit, but he had a vestment that was reversible and it had gold on one side and violet on the other, so he could wear it all the time, white replacing uh, gold replacing white, red, and green. He could wear it all the time unless he was having a funeral mass, a requiem mass. So those are the colors that are used in the liturgy and what they symbolize, reminding us of the theme of the liturgy. Now, we especially see this theme in what we call the liturgical year. And, of course, we as human beings, we enjoy variety. You know the old saying, variety is the spice of life. So we have changing seasons in the liturgy. And yet, even though one season, one liturgical season gives way to the next, and we have that beautiful variety, we also have that permanence that the liturgical year is repeated, year after year. And the liturgical year is like a big cycle or wheel that goes around and then starts over again. 
And really, it is like two cycles that interconnect with one another. Think of two large gears that have cogs on them, and they come together and they join at the cogs at a certain point as each wheel or each gear is spinning. So these two large cycles are what we call the temporal cycle and the sanctoral cycle. The temporal cycle has to do with the Sundays of the year and the feasts of our Lord, especially Christmas and Easter, the Feast of Pentecost, also the ferias. So those would be in the temporal cycle. And on the other hand, we have the sanctoral cycle, which is the feasts of the saints. The sanctoral cycle goes by the date, whereas for the most part, the temporal cycle has to do with the seasons. Now, how does a priest know on a particular day which Mass to offer? In other words, you can have a Sunday that falls on the Feast of a Saint. Which takes preference? The temporal cycle or the sanctoral cycle? Well, that is determined by very complex rules of the liturgy, and these are spelled out for the priest each year in a booklet that we call the Ordo. And the priest that puts, puts the Ordo together studies the liturgical rules governing the precedence of feasts and then puts that down in the Ordo, which tells the priest what is being offered. You can use your calendar to, to guide you in that regard. Now, the... Um, the precedence of feasts, as I mentioned, sometimes you'll have feasts that have a higher rank, and so they will be offered on the Sunday instead of the normal Sunday Mass. Now, regarding the temporal cycle, this revolves around two feast days, Christmas and Easter. And each of these two great feast days has a period of preparation, a period of celebration, and then a period of thanksgiving and application. The period of time ar around Christmas is much shorter than that around Easter, which has a much greater place, much greater predominance. But if we look at Christmas, the preparation would be the four Sundays, the four weeks of Advent. And then we have the period of celebration, which is Christmas tide, beginning with Christmas up until and including the octave of Epiphany. And then the time after Epiphany would be that period of thanksgiving and application. Then we come to the Feast of Easter. And the Feast of Easter is so important, the most important day in the entire year, such that the period of preparation is much longer, more involved. In fact, the period of preparation has three particular parts to it. There is pre-Lent, what we are in right now, and then we have Lent, the 40 days of Lent. And then we have the last two weeks of Lent, which have a special name called Passion Tide. So that's the period of preparation for Easter. And you notice that with both Chris, Christmas and Easter, the period of preparation is uh, a time when the priest wears violet vestments because it's penitential, a period of preparation. And then the period of celebration for Easter would begin with Easter Sunday and go all the way up to the Feast of Pentecost 50 days later and include also the Octave of Pentecost. That is a period of celebration and of joy. White vestments, but then when we get to Pentecost, red in honor of the Holy Ghost. But after the Octave of Pentecost, we have the time after Pentecost, which is about half the year, from about early or mid-June, up until around the 1st of December. And during those Sundays, the priest wears green vestments. That's the time of thanksgiving and application. Unless, again, as I said, there's a saint that occurs or a feast day that predominates over the Sunday Mass. Now, an interesting question. How do we know when Easter occurs? Because much of the liturgical year is determined by the date of Easter which is different every year. Well, the date of Easter 
follows this rule. It is on the first Sunday after the first full moon of spring. So after March 21st, you have a full moon. The first Sunday after that full moon is Easter Sunday. This year, I believe, April the 12th. And so that determines how many Sundays after Epiphany, how many after Pentecost, when the other seasons begin, and so forth. So the, the liturgical year is very well planned out. And it is this beautiful cycle, again, of feast days that we celebrate. And every time when Christmas comes around or Easter comes around each year, as well as all of the others, they, they are new and fresh because we haven't celebrated them for a year. And yet by having this great variety, we are reviewing all of these great mysteries of our faith and reflecting upon the different aspects of the life of our Lord and his teaching. So let us love the liturgy and I encourage you to use your missals on another occasion, I would like to speak about the parts of the Mass so that we can appreciate and value how the Mass is laid out and the beauty of the different prayers of the Mass. But let us attend the liturgy with attention to, again, use the Missal, preferably, to follow along, to read the prayers, reflect upon them, and reflect upon this that I mentioned last Sunday that the beauty of the liturgy in itself, in the Catholic Church and only in the Catholic Church, do you have this very well laid out, well organized beauty of the liturgical year. That in itself should prove to us that the Catholic Church is the true church founded by our Lord, which carries on his work and will do so until the end of time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.